Welcome back to the channel, y'all. We're gonna make a bow today. My final hunting bow of this year. I've built five bows so far this season. Uh, half of them have broken, and the other half, I just don't feel comfortable taking to the woods. Some are underpowered, and like this one, I love shooting it, but it's inconsistent. And, and let me show you why. This is my Osage uh, Comanche style flat bow. Actually, Comanche bows were even shorter than this. Uh, they were designed to be shot off the backs of horses. This one's 55 inches. So when it's strung up, you know, it's, it's about chest level to me, which is great for inside of a blind, you know, it's compact and everything. Be good for stocking, but it's instinctual style shooting. Shot was way off. This is what scares me. Instinctual shooting, you're, you're basically burning a hole through the target with your eyes. You're gonna line up that arrow right where you wanna shoot. You're gonna pull back. Wow, I almost missed the target. You know, a lot of times I'll come out here and I'll shoot a couple arrows in a row, right in the bullseye, 10 yards, feel great. And then that third arrow will fly like a foot off that. It takes really, really consistent form to be able to shoot instinctual. And then when you get your windage right, you've got to really know your elevation. It just takes a, just a ton of practice shooting one in particular bow. That is not good enough for me to go to the woods. And right now it's just way too inconsistent. So I want to basically have an anchor point and able to, and in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to make a longer bow. So this one's 55 inches. I need about a 62 inch bow that I can fully draw back and get an anchor point, either on my nose, corner of my mouth, something where it's consistent every time. And it's not just a snap shoot where I pull it back and then just let go. A lot of inconsistencies there. So this is actually gonna be two videos. We're gonna take our stave today. We're gonna to get it worked down into a floor tillered bow. And then the next video, we're gonna get it fine tuned get it shooting arrows. So let's get our piece of wood and let's turn it into a bow. So first step in making this hunting bow is we got to have a piece of wood, right? So this is a, this is a piece of Osage that I cut and split earlier um, this winter. And this takes a really long time to dry. There's, you know, just depending on the climate, it may take eight months. Um, it may take couple of years to dry out completely and you want it to dry out so you're not getting a lot of uh, warping twisting and then set that's why you want it to be completely dry which this stave is so I had a local boyer give me this and this is Osage orange that is dried for two years so first step is to figure out the length that we want and that depends on our draw length which Mine's gonna be around 28 inches. And that's most people, quite honestly, on a trad bow. I've already measured where I need to cut off the ends. Um, there's a knot on one side and I wanna be able to miss that knot. I don't want that to be at the very end of the bow. So I've skipped ahead of that. Already made that adjustment, mark my line. So we're gonna go ahead and put this into the vise and cut it. Alrighty, grab our saw. Okay, we've got our line here. We're gonna cut this so we've got a 62 inch bow. If you guys have never used a saw like this, a Japanese pull saw, they're awesome. Really good at making fine cuts. Okay, that looks good. That is just about as hard a piece of wood as you're ever gonna find. Really the two ultimate bow woods are Osage and U, Pacific U, which we ain't got none of that around here. But we got plenty of Osage. It's native to the Red River Valley. And this I believe came from Texas. All this other stuff I got over here behind me is from Oklahoma. Should be Right at 62, we are dead on 62. So we're dead on 62, 31 is gonna be 
dead center. So we'll go ahead and mark that. So I'm going to mark the center of my bow and then I'm going to take my hand and kind of place it in the middle. From side to side, that's about four inches. Just go ahead and take the old protractor from eighth grade. Put this on here. Mark this at two and a half inches side to side from center. Now there's one thing about this stave that is different than most other Osage staves that you get. So I was given this by a bowyer, his name is Austin, and he had already worked the back of this bow down to a growth ring. So woods like Osage, uh, hackberry, which is real common around here, mulberry, uh, there's a number of other woods that uh, the very dense woods that you'll use where you want the back of the bow, which is the part that faces away from you, you want that back of the bow to be one growth ring. So you look at a rings on a tree, you know, you count the rings. It's, this is just one growth ring. So this is one year, you know, this is probably 1994 or something. The belly of the bow will work down through the layers, but it's that back that's really bending away. And that's the part that needs to be one layer. Just prevents splintering from uh, popping up. And that is extremely important on an Osage bow. That, that's one of the keys that you must follow in order to have a bow that's gonna last. So Austin actually saved us a ton of time doing that. And you can already see, this is brown. Like this is starting to turn brown, which is what it will naturally do. But compared to this right here, like this wood is still sort of yellow. Next thing I'm gonna do is lay out the bow. Just kind of use a pencil and lay this out. And there's measurements that you could follow and the Bowyer's Bible kind of shows you some of these measurements. But because we have just a few little knots and things on the side, some, some things that I'm gonna to have to incorporate into the bow, you can't just go through a knot because that, that'll just ruin the bow, makes it weak. I'm just gonna sort of pencil how I want the bow to go, just kind of visualize it. I'm gonna use a hard reference with a measuring tape for the the final tapers towards the ends. This, this bow is already about two inches wide to begin with, which is perfect. So I'm gonna come over here, 10 inches off this end as well. Five inches from there, I want this thing to be. I'm actually gonna do an inch and a quarter. It's part of the fun right here. You can just kind of Bob Ross this thing. Do whatever you feel like, whatever looks natural to you. Okay, I like it. So I've been using a machete to shape all my bows, which I mean, it's worked. It works pretty good. But one of you sent me a really special item. I didn't even request this. This is a draw knife from Kentucky. I don't know how many years old it is. It looks like it's a hundred years old. Like it's so old that the, the wooden handles, the original wooden handles are starting to crack and fall off. I had to wood glue one of them back together. And this is a much safer way to shape a bow. So I'm actually gonna use this ancient pioneer tool, pretty awesome, to make this traditional hunting bow. Let's go do it. Let's make some shavings. Last bow of the year. It's good exercise if you don't have a bowyer's vice table situation. All right, how do I, how do I want to do this? Oh yeah, that stuff is harder than concrete. Got a lot more power using this draw knife and machete. My wrist isn't going to get as good of a workout, but... Oh my gosh, this stuff is hard. I really want to take a lot off this midsection. So as I'm working through this, I can start to see that yellow wood underneath. See the old wood where it's dried out. 
is my first piece of Osage I've worked on that's truly been dried out for a long time. All right, got the first little layer of the onion off here. Got in some of that yellow wood. And we're just gonna keep ripping. We're gonna rip on the sides where we drew our lines and keep ripping on that belly until it starts to bend. Bit of rain come in. I've been working on this bow with the draw knife for about six hours total. I finished up yesterday, came back, and I started working on it, and I've got it to shape, to rough shape. I would say it's a roughed out bow if we can get it to bend a little bit. So this is the big test right here. We're going to put it down on the ground, see if there's a bend in it. You can still feel the, the mass of this bow but it is shaping up a little nicer. So let's put it on the ground. Yep, starting to get a little bit of bend in there. Just barely, just barely, but we're starting to, starting to come together. I can already see this is, a, this is a big problem area right here. So I hit this knot right here with the draw knife. Not meaning to, just got going kind of quick and hit that knot. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there is a slight propeller twist in this bow. So just meaning, you know, like a boat propeller, the limbs are sort of turning like this, and they're going opposite ways. Happens sometimes when the wood dries. So what I'm gonna have to do when I get it shaved down even more is I'll, I'll heat this wood up, and then I'll actually bend it with some pressure and get it to, to go straight, and then we'll finish the full tiller. So that'll probably be on the latter part of this video, but right now let's clean up this knot. Let's get it where it's floor till tillering decently and then uh, we'll have the basics of our primitive hunting bow. Shout out to Blades by Blake for making me this beautiful custom knife. Look at that quarter inch thick thing as sharp as a tack awesome. I, I've actually been using this knife quite a bit for tasks like this on making bows because it's it has so much torque behind it. How much grip it has. I mean, it's a really thick blade, heavy blade, but it's just all packed in there. And then it's got a really good spine. So what I do want to do little shavings. Take little bits off the bow. It makes beautiful, beautiful little curls like that. spots is this is thick like this knot goes through all the way to the other side so when I'm tillering it just makes a weird spot for the bow to bend evenly because the thicker spots aren't going to bend as much so it's like having a big wart in there but it's part of the character we'll do our best to 
get it to bend correctly. We're gonna move on to the other limb, clean it up a little bit, and then we'll check our floor tiller one more time. There's something about working on a bow though is therapeutic in ways. Feels really good. Connects you to the old ways of life, man. Take a look at it. Let's see what we got. Okay, got a little bit of bend. It's supposed to be just tough stuff, man. We're bending. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just barely bending, but it's it's good enough to. Uh, I can't really eyeball. This is why you need a tillering tree, so you can really see the even, the even bend. I think it's ready though. I think it's ready to start putting some notches in. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup work, put some notches in, and then I'll put a tillering string on it, and then we'll see where those bends are. Right now, this is probably an 80 pound bow at 16 inches. We want it to be about a 50 pound bow at around 28 inches. So we got a lot of work to do, but it's bending. So thanks guys for tuning in to part one of me building my ultimate primitive hunting bow. Hopefully it's gonna be the last one for a while, but I'll tell you what, this stuff is addicting. Once you build one, you wanna build a hundred. You wanna get them perfect, but you'll, you'll never really get there. It's just fun trying. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and follow me over at uh, Instagram as well to See the little tidbits of my life. So God bless you and all of your great outdoor adventures. I'll see you 